Do you really feel safer under Donald Trump? Mr. Trump, you want to talk about fear? Do you know what people are afraid of in America? They're afraid they're going to get COVID. They're afraid they're going to get sick and die. And that is in no small part it's because of you. As Trump tries to distract with his dire warnings of death and destruction in American cities, he continues to actively ignore the death and destruction brought on by COVID-19 and his own mishandling of it. Over the weekend, we blew past another mind-blowing milestone. More than six million Americans have been diagnosed with the virus, about a million and a half in the past month alone. And the death toll is inching closer to 200,000. The devastating human toll isn't the only thing that has wreaked havoc on America. Just last week, a million more Americans signed up for unemployment benefits. They joined the roughly 27 million Americans who were already unemployed. Extended unemployment benefits have decreased since the last initial $600 in supplemental insurance lapsed in August because the White House refused to negotiate with House Democrats. And the federal moratorium on evictions is already over. Housing experts pro project that between 30 and 40 million Americans could soon be evicted from their homes. Economists and federal officials are also warning that without an additional stimulus from the federal government, the country faces a long-term recession. For more, I'm joined by Dr. Lippy Roy, internal medicine physician, Jason Johnson, professor of politics and journalism at Morgan State University, and Charlie Sykes, editor-at-large of The Bulwark. I'm going to go in reverse order. I wanted you to listen, Charlie, to another thing that Joe Biden said today about whether we would be safer under jo jo Donald, Joe Biden himself or Donald Trump. We're now on track to more than 200,000 deaths in this country due to COVID. More than 100,000 seniors have lost their lives to the virus. More cops have died from COVID this year than, than have been killed on patrol. Nearly one in six small businesses is closed in this country today. Do you really feel safer under Trump? You know, and Charlie, um, we, we looked it up. Our great producers here at the readout looked it up. So 9-11 related um, cancer, the police's police officer deaths. There have been 172 deaths this year. Three from 9-11 related cancer, one from an, air, an aircraft accident, three from drowning, um, duty related uh, illness, two, gunfire, 29, and inadvertent gunfire, only four. And then you go down and there's lots and lots of other ways that people are killed. There have, there have literally been more police officers who've died from COVID than have died from anything on duty. I wonder how long this Donald Trump narrative, this made up narrative can last when people's actual real lives are being lived and they actually see the death and destruction in their own in their own families sometimes. Well, that was an extraordinarily interesting question that Joe Biden posed. You know, it, it you know, the question often is, you know, are you better off than you were four years ago? Um, but to ask, do you think that you're going to be safer under Donald Trump? I think that takes the case to him. And, and Joy, I, I think that what you're doing here is very, very important because we need to understand that this is a distraction from a distraction. That Donald Trump very clearly wants to talk about, he wants to talk about urban violence, he wants to talk about Black Lives Matter because he does not want to talk about the deaths from COVID. He does not want to talk about what's going on in the economy. He does not want to talk about his failure and the fact that we're about to hit 200,000 dead Americans. So I think people do need to understand the cynicism behind this, where the president of the United States is putting politics ahead of actually protecting us from the pandemic and is willing to inflict this kind of damage on the, on, on the American political scene, you know, using the tribal division that you, that you were discussing just a few minutes ago. You know, and you know, and I didn't give the, the the police officer number who died from COVID. It's not one thousand nine hundred ninety three. So it's one thousand nine hundred ninety three versus one seventy two, right? So yeah. it's a lot more. Um, Jason, the the ways that Donald Trump has dealt with COVID because it is the biggest threat to his reelection. Let's just full stop. The thing that's the most threatening to him staying right. in power is his mishandling of COVID. But he's just resisted even believing COVID is real uh, or doing the sort of logical things that one would do if you wanted to both help people and stay in power. Here is what um, Jared Kushner said. This is a quote. Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law and advisor, this is during the real supply chain chaos, said, we're an organization with 56 clients, referred to the U.S. states and territories. It's not our job to secure supplies for them. It's our job to help them. It said the federal government's approach turned hospital systems and state governments into rivals. This is as medical providers were begging for supplies. One doctor worried about his shipment of masks and gowns would be seized by another state divided the supplies between two trucks to make sure at least one could get through. Hospitals are having to sneak supply chains through 
to try to get to try to save the, the lot to try to save lives. Can do you understand just as a political scientist why the Trump administration would be so resistant to actually doing the thing that would actually help them and help people? Well, because, Joy, as we saw that report several weeks ago, because at least initially they thought it was only going to attack blue states. You know, like having a smoking section in an elevator. For some reason, they thought that COVID would only affect major cities and blue states, so they didn't do anything about it. And then when the problem got out of control, states were sort of forced to compete in this sort of Hunger Games feudalism. And in Maryland, remember, the governor had to send the National Guard to protect a shipment of masks because he was afraid that Trump and FEMA would steal it from the BWI airport. So that's why we've seen this sort of absolute incompetence. But but I'd say it's three levels of distraction. So distraction one is Trump wants to scream about Black Lives Matter and scare the suburbs. I don't know. I'm a suburbanite. I'm more terrified of white on white crime. I've seen a lot of white people been shooting each other lately. I'm concerned. Uh, the second level is he doesn't want to talk about COVID. But all of that isn't even just a distraction from the economy. It's a distraction from the fact that he's destroying the post office and wants to steal the election. Trump wants to talk about anything other than the fact that he's trying to rig an election because he knows the polls say he's going to lose. Yeah, I mean, his son, Eric, um, the other one, I guess they call him the other son. He was literally like, all people ever want to talk about is COVID, COVID, COVID. Yeah, man, six million people have it. It's like the biggest right. threat to American life. It, everyone just talks about COVID, COVID. Yes, that's right. That's what we want to talk about. It's killing people. Uh, Dr. Roy, it seems that now they're sort of belatedly deciding, oh, my God, we have to try to look like we're fixing COVID. So here's the kind of things that they are uh, proposing. They're trying to say there's suddenly going to be a vaccine, which I don't think a lot of people are going to trust. Uh, in an interview with the Financial Times, Stephen Hahn, who's, I guess, one of Donald Trump's favorite new uh, authorities, said his agency was prepared to authorize a vaccine before phase three clinical trials were complete, as long as officials believe the benefits outweighed the risk. But he defended the embattled organization against um, uh, accusations that he's rushing the process to boost Trump's reelection process, prospects. That's the FDA playing ball. Would you give your own patients a vaccine that was rushed through with that before they finished phase three trials? Hey, Joy. Um, well, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't give it. I wouldn't recommend it for my patients. I wouldn't recommend it for my family or for myself. While I do believe and most healthcare professionals do believe that vaccines in general, uh, all the vaccines that we've pretty much ha have had thus far in over the course of human history ha have been very safe and are highly recommended. Um, no, but th those those vaccines that we highly recommend have gone through a rigorous testing process, clinical trials. What's happening now what, and what the FDA, unfortunately, is getting pressured um, to do is, is authorize uh, vaccines to be released uh, to the public without going through the appropriate channels. I also just want to say that, you know, that clip that you showed with, of, of Vice President Biden, what I heard and what's so critical for physicians and healthcare professionals is the sense of empathy. I heard yeah. the vice president talk about elderly Americans, people in nursing homes, like genuinely caring about the most vulnerable people. He talked about black and brown people. He talked about communities of color. Whereas the other clip that you showed of, um, you talked about uh, the, the president's son, as well as the son-in-law, talking about supply chains and the business side of it. Um, those are two very different narratives. And, yeah. uh, and you pointed out very clearly, Joy, nothing else matters. There's really, uh, you know, uh, topics one right. through 10 are yeah. all about coronavirus. We have have to get a handle on that first before we can solve any other problem. Including the economy. Very quickly, before I let you go, Charlie Sykes, you know the right. You used to do right-wing radio. Donald Trump is now pushing herd immunity, his people. Scott Atlas, who's his new favorite uh, phys physician-type person. You, It would take 2.13 million deaths to reach 65 percent herd immunity. 2.13 million people would have to die. They're also pushing a weird theory that because a lot of the people who died of coronavirus actually also had like another thing. They had a couple of different things that really it's only 9,000 people have died. Can they put that over on right wing voters? Will right wing voters really say, uh huh, 2.13 million people can die. I'm cool with that. Uh huh. It's only 9,000 people, even though, you know, the news, even Fox is telling me it's 200. Can that work? The bad news is it will work with some people. Um, the, the bad news is there are a lot of people who get their news from Facebook, from within that alternative reality bubble. And I'm seeing it right. already. But that base is yes. not enough to win an election. That base is not enough to get Donald Trump another four years, because while he is doing that, you have other you have millions of Americans, including in the suburbs, who are looking at that and saying this kind of misinformation 
you know, could could kill me, could kill my grandmother, could kill my mother, my, my sister, right. it will put my children at risk. And that's the real problem when you have the president of the United States willing to traffic in this kind of deadly toxic misinformation. Yeah, a lot of people are going to die in the suburbs listening to him. Dr. Lippy Roy, Jason Johnson, Charlie Sykes, thank you guys very much. Uh, Trump's director of national intelligence cancels briefings on foreign election interference. What are they trying to hide? The readout continues after this.